And we're live. Well, hello. Welcome to another episode of Building Your Wellness Brand Within Your Community. I'm Dr. Alan Weinstein. Today's episode is brought to you by Epic Consulting, making sure your electronic presence it all, is all it needs to be. And Community Wellness Day, every great opportunity begins with the first step. Take that step with Community Wellness Day. And the system, the official marketing program for healthcare practitioners everywhere. And of course, the VIP app, the only application that allows you to bring your live hangouts just like this one to the desktop, iPhone, iPad, and Android devices. Our apps are so good, people are going to want to lick them. Today, our special show is an interview with chiropractic authority and great friend, Dr. Lyle Kocha, a.k.a. Chiroman. Dr. Lyle is um, an honors graduate of Palmer Chiropractic College. He's the founder of Kocha Chiropractic Clinic. He's been serving Omaha and been the best of um, Omaha for the last 27 years. He's a sought-after international speaker, coach, motivator, mentor. He's got a great sense of humor. We love him. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to my co-host, Dr. Randy Ross. Well, thank you, Dr. Allen. Um, no matter how many times I see that phone looking, licking thing and I see it uh, through Lyle a little bit too, it always takes me a little bit to recover from that. But we're, um, I'm really excited to have Lyle here today. Uh, many of you watching and, and maybe listening to this in a replay, uh, you know, have never had the pleasure of, of seeing him talk. And he's just an incredible individual, um, one of the most successful people in the chiropractic profession and maybe in, in many other healthcare professions. You don't see people that are really, as I say, not only does he talk the talk, but he really walks the walk and he's passionate and he's committed and, uh, the, and the energy that comes from Lyle is just amazing and that's not just a show that he puts on for you, that's really who he is and we're excited to have him here today and have him share some words of wisdom. So Dr. Lyle Kocha, also known as the Chiro Man, thank you for being here. Hey, thanks for I, I I appreciate the opportunity. The you know the cool was is I haven't talked to you in so long. I know. you know I get to talk to Alan every now and then on Tuesday mornings, and um, so of course like when he said it was deja vu, I went through my history lesson with you, but he already heard it. But I mean, nice to see you again via yeah. these cool thing called the internet. Although you know we were a little slow here in Nebraska getting it set up, but we're back. That's okay. We'll let you slide. We know you may notice people like tag behind a on us Northeasterners a little bit, so we'll 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 give you that much. <laughs> I'm in the middle of the country. Bear with me here. I mean, we're lucky to have this thing called electricity. Yeah. Do you still have dial up over there? You know. <laughs> don't laugh, but my neighbor years ago used to. I think he still does. We have DSL now. Okay. All right. You're getting there. Um, I'm getting there. All right, so so uh, we're gonna put your feet to the fire here a little bit, and you know one of the things I know about you is you're very dynamic at, at making sure that the message gets out there. And one of the things that you know from from us working together in years past is we're the foundation and the core of what we teach is really all about. Um, you know, the importance of building relationships in your community and not just with the individuals who, you know, who you serve and, and give care to, but also with the different people that, you know, have influence and, and a little bit of power in the community and the ones that can really connect us and help us get our message to people that we might not be able to reach on our own. So I want you to talk a little bit about, you know, why you think it's what we call relationship marketing or relationship building in your community is really important to professionals and the success of their practice and their business. You know, and one of the things, Randy, that we, we've done, and I branded, if I can use that word, uh, our, our word, I like relationate. Um, you know, for so long and in practice for 27 years, I've always heard that it's the educated patient that refers. And I disagree with that because I've had a lot of patients that really understand what the benefits are of getting shacking and, if, if necessary, getting adjusted, but they've never referred me a soul. I know people in the community that understand what chiropractic is, should be, should do, but don't go get adjusted. It's kind of like we know we should put a seatbelt on, but we don't put a seatbelt on. We know, just like you know, before we got on the interview today, I had to go into Omaha and, and do some stuff. Um, you, you know you shouldn't text and drive, but people stop. I'm driving by a guy who's in my lane. He's texting and driving. So 
we educationally we know these things, but it's the relationships to circle back around what you said that you build in your community that you build. And I say in your community. When I talk of the community, I talk of the community within my practice. And then when we go externally outside of my community, I make darn sure that people know that what I am and who I am, that, that I'm a chiropractor and I'm there to check your, your spine and nerve system so you can live a better experience. So it's, it's building that relationship that in a time of crisis and in a time of need, when they want to know something about a healthcare situation for their friends, family, or somebody out of town, I mean, I tangent, but driving, driving back home, I, I got, when I came in the house, I got an email from one of our patients who has a friend who lives in, and I didn't know they had chiropractors in Rhode Island, who had a friend in Rhode Island needs a chiropractor. There's one or two. Is there two? And and it's and it's that's all about relationships. Um, and so relationships are the key to building a solid core business. They're the key to building, you know, a life that's full and complete. I, I mean, I had students with me all this week. We got students today, we got students tomorrow from Palmer. And it's kind of funny, at the end of the night, I ask him, I just go, what would you see? And then it was so funny, the, the one kid last night, he, we had three students, and, and he's like, you really don't sit and educate your patients. I go, yeah, I do. You totally st I educate them on what's important to them, which is about their life, thus that's building relationships. Yeah, and, and I think that's an important lesson, and, and we heard that actually with one of our guests last week, that... Uh, sometimes educating people is what they can hear, not necessarily what you want them to hear. And I and I think that that's an art uh, and a talent that probably comes with a little bit of maturity and experience. I don't think we all know that. Uh, like you said, at, at the student level, um, you know, or when you're first starting out. Well, you know, Randy. Though, but with that, and and people don't. I I think our kind is is this. They come into your office. Believe it or not, they've already checked you out on the internet. They've already gone to the internet and looked up something. So, and and it's quite honestly, even if you tell, and I use the word tell a patient something versus Socratically ask them questions, but what we like to do is chiropractors like to tell them something and like, I'm going to tell you what I know and you're going to listen to me because I'm an authority. They're going to go home and check it out on the internet. Versus if you build that bond with them and you meet them where they're at and create a value association with them. And which, you know, I call it be Dracula, be a vampire with them, which hopefully we'll get into. I call it permission created value relationships. When you do that, you may go tell them something, but they're still going to trust you because you built that relationship. S say that for me one more time per per permission created value relationships, because I think that translates into any business, whoever's watching us, whatever kind of healthcare provider they are, even you know outside of chiropractic, that just sounds like a sensible business model. So address that a little bit in more detail. Well, it, it's <laughs> I don't know if I can do it in detail. We're on this for three hours, right? <laughs> um, but here, here's what 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 we do, and I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but it works great in in chiro world. Is when somebody comes to your office, they already know, hey, my back hurts, my neck hurts, I got a stomach problem, I got a headache, my hand is, whatever challenge they have. And what they want right there and then, they want it taken care of right now, if possible, do it yesterday, and can you do it online and possibly repay them. I mean, that's the model today. We are a, I want it, how fast can I, just like on the internet, setting this up today. How fast can we get this set up? That people want. That's their urgent need. I want this right now. What you've got to do is find out how that urgent need relates to the desires they have in your life. And I call that value creation. So what we do is I find out what's important to them, and I find out what's important to them, not now, but 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the road. And our whole conversation that we have, not only on day one, but day two, that on day whatever, is always about the value they have in your life. For example, you know, you and I haven't talked for a long time. But I'm going to see if I'm going to get this right. Your little girl's name Felicia. Correct. Right? Good memory. She 14 now? Am I right? 13 and a half. How close? Okay. We haven't talked in what? Over a year and a half to two years? Shame least, on us. Yeah. At least. But I remember your little girl. Now I'm going to tell you how much. And this is called value creation ships. I'm seeing you grin. I remember two year, three years ago, your little girl did a lemonade stand 
outside your house for the flood victims we had here in Omaha, Nebraska, and you sent us that money. Your little girl did that. And I asked you if you'd send me the pictures when it happened. Do you remember that? I do remember that. We were having a garage sale, and her and my, our neighborhood kid, they did it together, and they walked around the whole neighborhood and made everybody buy lemonade for you guys. And I know that your little girl is very important to you, and I also know that your pet that you lost was very important to you, too. I remember that because that's important to you. And the same thing to me. What's very important to me the love of my life, which is my wife, Sean, and my little girl, Blake. Those are my two most important things in the world. So with that, if I'm going to – and I re, and, and honestly, Randy, I didn't go look this up on the internet before we got on the phone. I remembered that because you were important to me. And, I, and I'm not just blowing fluff up to you. I know that. And so as a healthcare provider, if you truly care about the people that you're going to put your hands on and that you're going to see, you have to find out what's important to them. And you have to find out what their anchor is, and you have to constantly remind yourself and them that's what's important. The minute you stray from that, that's not relationship building. That's not value creation. The second thing I talked about is permission permission granted. You know, my wife and, and, and her, her and my daughter, Shauna Blake, they love vampire movies. And so I'm going to ask you a question. Do you, do you ever watch vampire movies? I do not. I bet Dr. Allen does. He looks like a vampire. I know. I, know, I don't, but my wife watches him. She loves him. <laughs> okay, so let's go here. Let's ask you a question. Alan, if, and Randy, if you watch it, can a vampire come into your house uninvited? I, I, I would venture to guess no. I would agree. Exactly. So, and I know it's a movie, but just use this as, as we go here. A vampire cannot come into your house uninvited. But the minute you invite the vampire into your house, they can bite you in the neck, and you're done. So what we do, and if it's okay with you, Randy, I want to kind of tell you a little bit more. Are you cool with that? Absolutely. I just bit you. I just asked you for permission. What we do in our office is I ask our patients, it's okay with you if I blank, blank, blank. I ask them permission. If it's okay with you, I'd like to tell you a little bit more about the benefits of chiropractic care if you're okay with that. Versus, here's what most chiropractors do. Let me tell you about how much I know because I'm great and I'm a chiropractor and you know anything. What we do, if it's okay with you, I'd like to tell you just a little bit more. That's called permission. So we ask permission. We find out their value. You think those two? Relationship created. And if you're full of BS, they're going to know. They're totally going to know. You know, um, here's, a good, here's a good example with that is um, right, wrong, or different. You know, I showed you my mixer thing. I love my scotch. And it is hilarious. Just like last night, Julie, one of our patients, comes in. She's a nurse. And she goes, you know, Doc, I know you've had a long day. She goes, favorite scotch. I told her one time. That's permission created. And so, and that's creating that relationship. So that that's what that means, Randy. I have to jump in here, too, because if you don't mind, um, about something that Lyle just said about permission. Um, when I when I got my diplomate in neurology um, as a chiropractic neurologist, um, I actually took that program for three times, nine years, because it was so amazing. And the thing that's amazing about it that people really don't really understand the value of what we do is because um, using chiropractic adjusting and working within the nervous system, I worked with Ted Carrick, who has awoken 600 people from comas. These are all different type of vegetative state patients. And this is all through manipulation, chiropractic adjusting. That's basically all he did. But of course, he knows how to do it very specifically. But the beauty of it is, is that every time before he treated a coma patient, he, even though they were in a coma, he asked their permission, is it okay if I examine you? Is it okay if I treat you? Is it okay if I do this? And the interesting part about that, of the 600 um, coma patients that he woke up, they all said the same thing, that nobody, they all heard his voice, even though they may have been locked in and couldn't respond. They, he, they said he was the only person that ever asked them while they were in a coma, could I have permission to treat you? Could I have permission to examine you? Could I have permission? And that relationship, even on the level of, that vegetative state they were in, 
they developed a connection with him as the treating doctor, which probably added for, in his ability to wake them up from the vegetative state that they were in. So it's so important, and it's the emphasis, you can't emphasize that enough. So if you can imagine the effect it has on someone who's not in a coma when you ask them their permission to be able to share something with them or do something with them. It's hugely powerful healing tool that most people totally dismiss. Just amazing, just really unbelievable point. And, and I agree, I think that's really important. One of the things that, that we actually teach when we go through the screening process with people is there's different kind of different layers of you know, when you're speaking to someone. And the third thing that we, that we tell people is to ask, you know, I'd like to send you some information from time to time on various health topics. Would you be interested in that? And what I tell people is you've now asked their permission, in this case it's electronically, instead of just assuming it and spamming them, and then they're actually looking for the information. So you've created that level of trust and, you know, permission permission granted, permission asked, permission granted. So I, I think that process that Lyle just explained really translates into a lot of things. And, and hopefully everybody listening to this will be really more aware of, of how you talk to people. Um, and, and I just think that that's, uh, I've never heard it quite put that way, uh, but I think that really ties it, ties it all together. <laughs> so, you, here's you, a, go ahead. No, no, that's fine. It, it's, see, but that's the problem we make is, as our profession. And I got to give Sean credit, my wife. She says, you know, the biggest problem with chiropractors, you think like chiropractors. True. What we have to do is we have to start thinking like them. You know, because they walk into your door, they're afraid. You know, they're like, oh my, I mean, I hate to break it to you, chiropractors. They haven't heard all the good things about you. They've heard all the bad things and amplified it about 155 times. So what you've got to do is you've got to meet them where they're at and start thinking how they think. You know, and, and, and again, another thing, I, gotta, I mean, Sean should be the one doing this interview because she's the one that tells me all the time, find out what their fears are and address them right away. Because if you don't address their fears, here's what they're going to do. They're going to go home. They're going to ask their neighbor who's not in your office who said don't go to the chiropractor. They're going to go on this thing called the Internet. They're going to look it up. They're going to see the worst things that are out there, or they're going to ask their medical doctor. None of those three are in your favor. Address them right away. You know, um, I think, Alan, are you jumping in? You can go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with that. And, you know, something you said before that adds to that, it's all really about they got to get to know, like, and trust you. And one of the other mistakes I think that doctors make is, like you said, even if someone refers a patient to you, they're going to go on the Internet and check you out. And one of the challenges are that when they get to your website, instead of making it about them, you make it about you and so you're assuming that what they came to you for is what's is what you are about and that's never the case it always your website your internet presence have to immediately answer three questions what is it what's it about and what's in it for me meaning the person who comes to your website and so few doctors do that like you said People come to your website scared. They don't know enough about what you do. They've heard negative things about chiropractic, more negative and positive, unless, of course, the rest of the family is a patient. And unfortunately, what happens is, is that the things that we say on our site or the things we show on our site just scares them because they don't, they don't know what it means when they see someone's neck getting twisted. They don't know what you're doing except other oh, twisting a neck. Or if you see a young child on a website and someone's using an instrument that looks like a gun from outer space stuck against a young baby's neck, they don't know what that means because they're not a chiropractor. Yet other chiropractors see that and we run around high-fiving each other. Wow, that was great. I saw the way you adjusted that baby, but I'm a chiropractor. So it has much more meaning to me. So I, I think you're right on the money there. But Alan, so with that, and that's, and I'm, wait, I don't even, Randy knows this, but you and I have breaking that down these last couple weeks. And I got to tell you, it's funny because what I've done is I've, I've gone to mine and, and I've got your, your core of patients. And I've told them, I want you, I haven't even told you this, I want you to go to my website and I want you to tell me everything, if it was your business, what you think with you, ask your friends and family, the more information you can bring me about my website, the bigger dinner I'm going to buy you. And it is, I mean, I've got one husband and wife, it is Vicky's her name, 
who brings me a bottle of scotch every couple of months and makes them the best freaking cookies on the planet. And she goes, I had Rich, her husband, looking at her website, and she goes, it totally confused him. I said, put it in writing. I want to see it. But I think too many chiropractors are afraid because of their ego and, you know, because, you know, it's all about me, me, chiropractor, versus really that's why we see such a small percentage of the population. Yep. Yep. That's why, I, I mean, I want world domination with Chiro World leading the way. And because when you brought it to my attention, I was like, I'm going to take it, but I'm taking it to another level. Yep, I love it. So that's why what you and I talked about, I mean, there's a sheet of paper, here it is, from, from Vicky breaking down my website. And I got to tell you, I first looked at it, if, if I didn't care, I would go, Vicky was mean. But I did care, and I was like, that was awesome, way to rip me apart. Because yep. I, I don't want to be, I, I, I want to be forgettable. Yep. Sorry, yep. I'm on a tangent. No, that's okay, but before we, I'm going to give it back to Randy, but before we leave, I have to ask a question that's totally unrelated. I don't, what, I know, I know a lot of people who say they drink scotch. I need a scotch recommendation to have in my house. I never seem to have the right scotch. Lagavulin. Was it? Lagavulin, 18-year-old distiller's edition. Okay, good deal. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to bring the conversation a little bit back on track here because Dr. Allen and Lyle, I know you know him a long time, every single uh, hangout we do, he finds a way. I think it's a challenge to me. My, he derails, and it's my job to bring it back. So, so uh, he, did it, he did it again successfully, talking about scotch. Okay, so here, here's something that I know that you'll understand, Lyle, because you work with so many chiropractors and as you said you you mentor them and you talk at schools and you talk all over if you had to tell me three things that you think health professionals have a roadblock with what do you think the three biggest roadblocks are that that keep them from achieving the level of success that they want or should have you know it's this is easy um, and for those who know me they're going to go, yeah, I know where he's going with this. So I don't know if you set me up. Um, but I just did this last week when I was at Sherman Chiropractic College, and I got a, I was at IRAPS, and I, Dr. Deccan allowed Dooley gave me the pleasure in Cordero to speak to the student body before the event. And we talked about this. There's three things. It's very simple. Um, number one, chiropractors don't have a grasp on the philosophy of, of chiropractic. Now, I mean, you don't have to be geeky, ampy like me to have, you know, Mabel and, you know, Jay in the back and, you know, my stack of green books, which whatever side they're on, right over there. Um, and on here, I've got my green books. I have a pretty good grasp of the philosophy over here to my left. I've got another chiropractic text, it's volume 14, that I'm digging into for a, a paper that I'm writing for a myth of the cause. But you, you've got to have an understanding of your philosophy. And it, just just a little bit, I think, would be very beneficial. Um, another one that, that chiropractors struggle with is a deep understanding of the science. They And I see this a lot. They say there's no evidence out there of what we do. I tell you what, you dig into the green books, you dig into some of the stuff that BJ talked about, you dig into volume 25, correlated chiropractic, there's a lot of research there. Um, you know, there's this past weekend I, I had these hands were on the original Windsor autopsy papers. Um, I, I literally killed the battery on my phone taking photos of all the papers that I could from Dr. Windsor when he did the Windsor autopsies. There, are, there are, There's so much science out there, it's right in front of us, but for some reason as chiropractors we think we've got to go somewhere else to get the science. It's there. So they don't have a grasp on their philosophy. They don't have a grasp on their science. And the most important one that I take, as Randy, you probably know, this great honor and, and honoring is our art. You know, you, you've got to be such an, an artistic adjuster, checker and adjuster. We're just going to bypass the check and go in the adjuster. You've got to be a Mozart. I mean, you, you've got to be a, a maestro of the greatest orchestra in the world that when you adjust somebody, it's like the room goes quiet. And, and if there's a family member in the room with you, they're just watching you with great awe. Because years ago, the greatest adjusters, and I've studied a lot of them, and interviewed a lot of the great adjusters, that some of the guys that worked with BJ, some of the people that worked with Dr. Gonstead, um, 
Bud Crowder, one of the greatest upper cervical docs of all time. I've read about him, Leonard Rutherford. Even some of the present day adjusters is to be such a, a, a fan of your art. Last night, I was at, we were leaving. I was adjusting one of our associate docs, and another doc was there. And I was like, hey, grab my phone, videotape me adjusting. Because I'm a Gunstead guy, adjusted his um, seventh cervical in the chair. And I was like, oh my gosh, it was awful. I mean, I rocked it. It moved, yada, yada, yada. And he thought it was great. But you know what? It wasn't one that I'd want to take a picture of and put it on the wall. So I asked the other doc who took the picture. I said, hey, I need, to adjust, I need to check you. I adjusted him, videotaped it, fixed it right there. Because I want to be so pure at my art. So to circle back around is you've got to love your art. You've got to be such a craft person at the art of what you do. You've got to know there's science out there. Read some of the science that we do and dig into your philosophy. It's those three things. It's the core of the essence of your being. Nice. Thanks for setting me up. <laughs> Unintentional, but worked out well for both of us. <laughs> So, and if if we want to talk about, you know, one of the challenges that chiropractors face, and you know, I don't think it's any secret, is uh, is the the percentage of people, if you wanted to talk about it, in our communities that are being rendered these services. Uh, if you had to tell me one thing that you think should be being done differently, that chiropractors should be doing differently to change that, what do you think that one thing? is going to, that they could do is going to elevate their level of success because when they're more successful they're obviously rendering care to more people and, and that's when we, uh, you know, we can change that dynamic that you spoke of a few minutes ago. Pride. Um, pride, pride in what you do as a chiropractor. Be so proud of, of your art. Be so proud of some of the greatest chiropractors out there. Be so proud of you've been given the gift to do. You know, Steve Prefontaine said it so well to do anything less than your best is to sacrifice the gift. We've been given a gift. Um, we've been given a gift and that's called the chiropractic adjustment is to take such pride in what you do, to take such pride that you're the only person on that block. You know, I one of the students we had with us last night, Kayla, it's, it's kind of funny, I should just give her a key to the office because uh, Whenever Kayla's on break, she comes and hangs out with us. And and I knew Kayla when she was an undergrad, and it's kind of funny to see her paradigm shift about chiropractic. And uh, it was so funny because I was going through a report last night, and this is what I told the patient. I said, here's your problem. This is what you've got. Um, I'm glad that's your spine, not mine, but here's the cool thing. I'm the greatest on the planet Earth to help you with that problem. She laughed, and she's like, okay, that was interesting. And I said, if I don't let these people know how great I am, who's going to tell them? So if you don't have the pride in what you do, then who's going to tell them? So it comes back to Randy, you've got to be so proud of yourself. You've got to be so proud of what you do as a chiropractor. Can well, I jump I, in on that question also? Yeah, sure. I want to add one thing to that because I think this is very important. When I moved to the town I'm in right now, which is about 15 um, uh, years ago, um, I have a town of 4,000 people. It's very rural. But we have nine chiropractors inside our community. And they're surrounding towns, but it's very rural. You know, they, they don't deliver the mail. you got to drive to the post office and get it, that type of thing. Um, when I came into the community, the first thing I did was when I started going into um, the community and lecturing, I called up the other nine chiropractors and invited them to my lecture to set up either tables or booths or whatever it was with their cards so that they can talk to patients also because I don't think that a chiropractor should see the other chiropractors in their community as only competition. It's more important that the community knows the value of what we do regardless of whether they're my patient or the patient of the chiropractor down the road, whatever it is, because if everyone really understood what it is we do, Everyone would want to be a patient, and even in a town of only 4,000, if everyone was under care, there'd be enough patients for everyone to go around. So many times I see other chiropractors who see chiropractors as their competition, and that creates a problem. They're not sharing the message. They're sharing their own message because they're looking at it as, I want that patient because I'm gonna, that'll be revenue for me, and I want to make sure that that person doesn't get that patient. So I think it's pride of what you do, but enough pride that it doesn't matter who their doctor is, 
as long as they're under care. Let me give you let me give you a, a, a analogy of that, and I use this all the time. And this is good, Alan. Sorry, Randy. We'll be back. Uh, it, it's kind of like this. Did you pull the Scott first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we take care of what? Maybe four percent of the population at best. Roughly. And and which really, you know what that means? And I'm not an accountant, which I'm using accounts here because I'm going there. That tells me there's a lot of people out there. So let's take in an accounting firm. When you go, notice what I said, an accounting firm, there's a lot of accountants in there that are doing books, right? Why don't chiropractors look at that the same way? Because we think that only a small percentage of people wants to get checked, which is such bogus buck that everybody wants to get checked. They just don't know about it yet. You know, I, I think back to the movie, um, uh, War of the Worlds, when the, the creatures were popping out of the ground and they were lasering people. You guys remember that movie? And everybody's running down the street and Tom Cruise is in it and the aliens coming out of the ground and their lasers melting people. And I remember watching that with my wife and I paused it. And she goes, what? And I go, you know if the aliens ever come out of the ground and start blasting us, here's what we're going to do. She goes, what's that? And I said, we're just going to run in a different direction. Because look at this. Everybody's running in the same direction. They're getting blasted. See, that's what's happening right now. The, the general public is running out of their doors. They're done with the present healthcare model. Chiropractors went, you, let's run with them. You know what? Get back to your house and do something different. And start thinking like accountants. Everybody needs their books done. Everybody needs their spine and nerve system checked. If it's not that one for you, send them down the road and let somebody else check them. We do that. We got a guy across the street. I'm his biggest referring patient because he likes to take care of car accidents. I don't. So we get car accident patients. I sent him to the guy across the street from me. He literally he used to be a patient of mine, which is really ironic. And he's told me this day, you know, you send me more people than anybody else does. He thought that was cool. I think that's embarrassing for his behalf. It's like get your butt out and tell people. So we have to start thinking like accounts. Sorry, Randy, tangent. No, no, and, and I I mean I I agree with that one thousand percent. And I would actually like to just, you know, bring together a couple of points that uh, that Lyle brought out that I, I think we really all need to uh, make notes of. Um, I think asking permission and getting permission, if it's not something you're doing consciously, you need to start practicing that. I mean, that I don't care what business you're in, that's a great way to build rapport with people. And as I always say, if people trust you, they're going to want to hear what you have to say and you're going to get that permission. Um, uh, you know, meet them where they're, at, where they're at. We talk about that all the time with Community Wellness Day is you got to get out there and you, you got to, whether they're in your office and you have to emotionally and intellectually meet them where they are or out in the community where you're physically meeting them where they are, I think that that's, that's such a key point. Um, find out what their fears are and address them right away. I think that that is so critical because as both Dr. Allen and, and Dr. Lyle have said, you know, a lot of people enter your office with these preconceived notions and many of them are not positive and they have fears whether they're founded or unfounded. You know, if you can bring that to the surface and you can address it um, and you can face that with them, you know, that's that's all the better to put that to rest. And again, you're 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 elevating that trust. You're building upon that. And um, you know, find out what their needs are. I've always said this, and it doesn't matter what business you're in. Uh, this is some a model that you should always follow. It's not about what you want. It's not even about what you have. It's about what that person's needs are. And most times, if you actually listen to people, and I know. Lyle talks about asking these Socratic questions so that you can get enough information back that you're going to hear what their needs are. If you really listen, and this is where I always say you have two ears and one mouth for a reason because God wants you to listen twice as much as you talk, um, you're going to hear where what you have can help them. You're going to hear where what you have is what they want and you can put it into that model. And, and I think, you know, both Dr. Allen and Lyle also just said something that's so important for us all to remember. If we're all doing this properly and taking pride, as Lyle said, and, and rendering service to more and more people, the more people that, that know about what you do, the more people will be a part of that service. 
And I think that's so important. You know, when we teach people how to do community wellness day, I never understand why the chiropractor down the block doesn't want to support you. Because if more people know about the service and the possibility of helping them with whatever their needs are, well, that's good for the entire chiropractic community, wherever you are. So, you know, don't be so myopic in what you do. And I think that's something, and, and Lyle, you'd probably agree with me, I know I practiced in, in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn, and I was lucky enough to know some of what I would call the old timers. If these guys were around today, they you know, would probably be close to you know, 90 or 100 years old. And they knew that. And they were a strong unit, and they supported each other. And these were guys that like studied under BJ and everything. Um, and, and their mindset to help, help grow as a profession was very different than a lot of what we find today. So I think those are important points to bring out. Um, I'm going to toss it back to Lyle to give us our last word before I do. Make sure if you're interested in finding out more about Community Wellness Day as a great tool for you to get that message out there and meet people where they are and learn some great relationship marketing tools that are effective outside your practice as well as inside, make sure to reach out for us and let us share that information with you. So I'm going to toss it back to Lyle to kind of give us our last words and then we go to Dr. Allen to close us out. It's all yours, Cairo man. <laughs> well, you know, and, and this is short and sweet, just a couple things to toss back at you. Um, years ago, the chiropractors had pride. And, and they really, I'm not saying we don't now, but I've taken a lot of my time talking to the docs, the men and women, the families of the chiropractors that, that were there before us. And they were, they were a close-knit bunch, and they, they looked out for each other. Part of that was because that dude behind me, you know, BJ, uh, I got BJ sits to my right, D-Day here, is here to my left. At my desk, you can't see them, but they're big two-stick statues that sit on my desktop. And you know, I, and it's kind of funny when people come to my house, Randy and, and Alan, and they sit at my desk, and they go, you know, that's kind of creepy because it's like when you look, they're staring at you. I did that intentionally because I want them to look down upon me and look at me to make sure that I hold true to what they did for us. They sacrificed a lot for us, and I'll and I'll end with that real quick. But I just want to touch base on about helping other chiropractors. This morning, which I do on Thursday mornings, um, I met a young guy at, at an event a couple months ago associating for another chiropractor, struggling in practice. And what this guy is having to do is in addition to working in his chiropractic practice, he has to work another job in the evening. He doesn't have a life. And I was like, my for you, in the next eight weeks, you quit doing that second job. So now, mind you, I've got three associates in my office. But... He came to me and said, do some help. What do I do? So he works for another doc. So every Thursday for an hour, an hour and a half, I meet with him. I don't do that to get him away from this other doc. I do that for him because he told me it really bothers him. He has to work in another place to pay the bills. And so I said, if you're willing to work, I'll help you work. And we do. And I, I as you know, Randy, I give him homework. And it's all based on art, science, and philosophy. And I drill him at that. But see, he's got so much pride, he doesn't want to do that anymore. And I'm willing to take that. And my wife, and Sean's like, you need to help this kid because he's got something. So be willing, chiropractors, to step up and help another brother or sister. Because we got to do this thing. And I say it, and I'll close with this, Randy. And those who have heard me speak, you've heard the story, but I'm going to do it anyhow. Anyhow, there was a time when you graduated from chiropractic school. Go back to the Crusader class. That was Dr. Gunstead's. That was Dr. Barge's father's class. Um, that was one of the greatest class ever, the Crusader class, 1923, I believe it was. But there was a time when you graduated from chiropractic school. The part of the rights of graduation is you were going to get arrested. And there was a good chance for when you got arrested, you were going to get thrown in jail. The reason that was going to happen, because you were a chiropractor, because you were told you were practicing medicine without a license. That wasn't true. Because you stuck core to your principles, your foundation of what you do. You stuck core to the stuck to the greens that sit behind me over here. You held true to your principles. And here's what happened. Those chiropractors and their families before us, they laid the pavement. They laid the road for us. They painted the lines and they kept that road so crystal clear and solid that we could go flying down that road, practicing our art, science, and philosophy for practice. But what's happened was as chiropractors, you put these blinders on. And you've allowed yourself to steer from that road. You've gotten out of your lane. You've lost that vision. 
As a result of that, what's happened is the road now that was traveled, it's starting to crack and crumble as weeds that are growing in that road. We're going out of our lane. What I'm asking you to do and commit to, those chiropractors that laid that road for you, that painted that road, that kept that road clear, that went to jail for you to practice chiropractic, show them that the sacrifice that they made for you was worth it. Because, ladies and gentlemen, they had faith in you. Now show them that they were right, and don't let them down. It's time to step up, gang. All right. Well, I couldn't say anything after that, so we'll toss it back to Dr. Allen to close this <laughs> <us> out. <laughs> Dr. Allen, all yours. Well, you've been listening to Building Your Wellness Brand Within Your Community. I'm Dr. Alan Weinstein with my co-host, Dr. Randy Ross, and of course, Cairo man himself, Lyle Kocher. Today's episode is brought to you by Epic Consulting, making sure your electronic presence is all it needs to be. Community Wellness Day, every great opportunity begins with the first step. Take that step with Community Wellness Day. The system, the official marketing program of healthcare professionals everywhere, and of course, the VIP app, and I won't go there. On behalf of myself, Dr. Alan Weinstein, Dr. Lyle Kocher, and Dr. Randy Ross, we'll look forward to seeing you again next week. Bye, everyone.